Welcome this evening to our Maundy Thursday liturgy. My name is Emily Wilmer and I'm the rector here at St. John's and it is an honor to be walking through Holy Week with you in this new way, this online way. Our service can be followed in your bulletin and we have posted those on our website and on the email that went out for our service and also on Facebook. Now more than ever, I am grateful for this time for us to connect and be together. So let us continue with our worship, which can be found in your bulletin. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Kneels at the feet of his friends, silently washes their feet. Master who acts as a slave to them. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love. Show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. Neighbors are rich and poor. Are black and white, neighbors are nearby and far away. Jesus, Jesus, fill us with your love, show us how to serve the neighbors we have from you. These are the ones we should serve. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose dear Son, on the night before he suffered, instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. 
tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it, your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgments. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. The Word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who had said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who has bathed does not need to wash, except for the feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right. For that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself, and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Righteous God, we give you thanks for this time to commemorate Monday Thursday, the reminders that you give us through this week and through these lessons, and most of all, through your life. Touch our lives through these words. In Jesus' name, amen. So here we are on Monday Thursday. I have a friend of mine in ministry, Dr. Robert Stamps, and he and I had a time to share together about the lesson that is before us this evening. He
he said something to me that was so interesting. I want to share some of his thoughts with you. The first he said, he said, Dorothy, imagine a bowl with water in it. In the bowl is a towel and a crown. He said, when I think of this image, I'm reminded that Jesus was fully servant, fully king, and said to God, glorify yourself. Now, it's interesting when we think of glory, we think of something triumphant and amazing and something that is drawing our attention. But consider this thought. The opposite of glory is grace. Grace is God coming in mercy to help us to the other side. God coming in mercy to help us to the other side. And by doing so, God brings glory to God's self. If you ever want to see an example of one who serves, read about Jesus. So here this scene unfolds, and the disciples are at supper with Jesus. During supper, Jesus gets up takes off an outer garment and wraps a towel around himself, pours a bowl of water, fills the bowl with water, and then proceeds to wash the disciples' feet. Jesus is giving us a visual reminder of what it means to be servant. By ministering to the physical needs of his disciples, he actually exemplifies the heart and role of a deacon. He washes the feet of those around the table, those whose hearts he knew, those who he knew would walk away from him. Yet he washed each one want no more, no less. So in this Monday Thursday service, let us embrace the challenge of this example. He took off his garment, wrapped a towel around himself, poured water in a basin and washed their feet. They had to have been totally baffled. Wait, Rabbi. That's not like opening blinded eyes or multiplying bread. What is this? That's not even like speaking to the wind and the waves and they obey your will. What is this? This is the ultimate in humility. And yet, as Jesus approaches the cross, God is revealing God's self. Imagine being loved so much that God comes, not sending someone else, but God comes and helps us to the other side. From life to life, it would take a God to walk us on that journey. And then in the midst of this miracle of an evening, as things are unfolding that just don't make sense, kings don't wash feet. <laughs> Gods don't become human beings and yield themselves to death, God. And yet here we have it, indications that totally Unexpected events are occurring in fulfillment of Jesus being Messiah. 
So Jesus then goes on after doing this washing of feet. He sits back at the table and then tells them this. Love one another as I have loved you. You will show the world that you are my witness. You will show the world that you've met me. <laughs> you will show the world transforming love. Love that is so transforming. Love that will not let you go. Love that washed feet of the very people who would leave and abandon Jesus. That kind of love, it's love that will not let us go, as the hymn writer said. And Jesus says, love like that, and you will be my witnesses. And you will go from life to life, from one side. To the other. Grace is God coming in mercy to help us to the other side. The Lord Jesus, after he had supped with his disciples and had washed their feet, said to them, do you know what I, your Lord and Master, have done to you? I have given you an example that you should do as I have done. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Peace is my last gift to you. My own peace I now leave with you. Peace which the world cannot give, I give to you. By this shall the world know that you are my disciples, that you have love for one another.
Prayers of the people are found in your service bulletin, Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom and peace for the just and proper use of your creation for the victims of hunger fear injustice and oppression for all who are sick or in danger sorrow or any kind of trouble especially Virginia Franklin Herb Judy, Amanda, Ellen, Bishop Susan, Patty, Gail, Helen, Michael, Paul, Curtis, Faye, Paul, Virginia, Bill, Brandy, Frank, and all who are suffering because of COVID-19. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, and Susan and Bob, our bishops, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them, who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon, upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, 
and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also 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 with you. Welcome again to all who are joining us this evening and a special welcome to those of you who are new to, to us. I would like you to join me in thanking our videographer, Andy Russell, and our Minister of Music, Jim Bennett, our clergy, Dorothy White and David Curtis, and all those in our choir and congregation who have given of themselves to make these services sacred and beautiful for us all. We invite you to, to return again tomorrow evening for our Good Friday service, and then on Saturday evening for the Great Vigil of Easter. And on Easter Day, we will join with many other churches throughout the country to watch the Easter service being broadcast live at the National Cathedral at 11.15 a.m. with presiding Bishop Michael Curry as the preacher. All members of St. John's and friends are invited to join us beforehand via Zoom conference for our virtual Easter brunch beginning at 10 a.m. And you're invited to wear your favorite Easter bonnets and have a cup of coffee in hand and your favorite Easter morning sweet or treat. As many of you know, we have not been having communion as part of our litur liturgy since our last service together in March. As an act of solidarity, with those who cannot be physically present with us here in church. But this evening, because it is the night we remember Jesus' last supper, we will share in the Eucharistic prayer, and though we will not consume the sacrament, we will share and be present with Jesus through the Spirit. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a perfect self-offering to God. Our service continues with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For our sins he was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself. And by his suffering and death, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us join together in saying the prayer in the absence of sacrament. Let us pray. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and long for you in our soul. Since we cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into our hearts as though you have already come. We embrace you and unite ourselves entirely to you. Never permit us to be separated from you. Amen. Let us bow down before the Lord. Almighty God, we pray you graciously to behold this your family, for whom our Lord Jesus Christ was willing to be betrayed and given into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me and are so far from my cry and from the words of my distress? Oh, my God, 
I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer, by night as well, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forefathers put their trust in you. They trusted and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They trusted in you and were not put to shame. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, he trusted in the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he delights in him. Yet you are he who took me out of the womb and kept me safe upon my mother's breast. I have been entrusted to you ever since I was born. You were my God when I was still in my mother's womb. from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many young bulls encircle me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their jaws at me like a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water. All my bones are out of joint. My heart within my breast is melting wax. My mouth is dried out like a potsherd. My tongue sticks to the roof of my mouth, and you have laid me in the dust of the grave. Packs of dogs close me in, and gangs of evildoers circle around me. They pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. They stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments among them. They cast lots for my clothing. Be not far away, O oh Lord, you are my strength. Hasten to help me. Save me from the sword, my life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, my wretched body from the horns of wild bulls. declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. Stand in awe of him, O offspring of Israel. All of you of Jacob's line give glory. For he does not despise nor abhor the poor in their poverty. Neither does he hide his face from them, but when they cry to him, he hears them. My praise 
is of him in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the presence of those who worship him. The poor shall eat and be satisfied, and those who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your heart live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nation shall bow before him. For kingship belongs to the Lord. He rules over the nations. To him alone all who sleep in the earth bow down in worship all who go down to the dust fall before him. My soul shall live for him. My descendants shall serve him. They shall be known as the Lord's forever. They shall come and make known to a people yet unborn the saving deeds that he has done.